was an average dog. She went and and but when she ate some alphabet soup, then what happened was bizarre. On the way to Martha's stomach, the letters lost their way. They traveled to her brain, and now she's got a lot to say. Now she speaks. Hello, brown cow. Martha speaks. Yeah, she speaks and speaks and speaks and speaks and speaks. What's a caboose? What are we eating again? Martha speaks. Hey, Joe, what do you know? My name's not Joe. She's not always right, but still that Martha speaks. Hi there. She's got a voice, she's ready to shout. Martha will tell you what it's all about. Sometimes wrong, but seldom in doubt. Martha will tell you what it's all about. That dog's unique. Testing, one, two. Hear her speak. Martha speaks and speaks and speaks and speaks and speaks. Today's show is full of grueling activities like hiking and foraging in nature. You guys, it's a nice day. What are you doing inside? Trying to fit today's words in one sentence. We'll have a seminar with an astrophysicist telescope identify. There were a couple of words just hanging out at the end there. You just need inspiration. Mr. Director, background number 201G, please. Can you put the stars in? Whoa! Watch out for all the words about nature and stars, and we'll see you at the end of the show. What's more relaxing than just staring at the sky? I like it when you have a week off from school like this. Guys, did you forget? Neil deGrasse Tyson is at the library in 10 minutes. Neil who? He's an astrophysicist. Astrophysicist? That's a long hair breed. Why is a dog at the library? I'm curious. Let's go! He's not a dog. An astrophysicist is a scientist who studies stars, space, and everything in the whole universe. He's the director of the Hayden Planetarium, which is the greatest place on Earth that doesn't sell hot dogs. We signed up for his week-long seminar, remember? Let's go! <laughs> Nobody but Skits followed me, and he's the only one who's not signed up for the seminar. I don't remember signing up for any seminar. What's a seminar? A seminar is a small class about a special topic led by an expert. This is a seminar on space led by Neil deGrasse Tyson, who's an expert on space. Count me out. I don't want to do anything more grueling than looking at the sky. That's exactly what we'll be doing. Astrophysics involves lots of observing the sky. I can do that. Welcome. In this seminar, we're going to observe and experience the universe. I'm Neil, Neil deGrasse Tyson. No, that's not necessary, but if I do something great, feel free. Oh, oh, question! We haven't even begun, but okay. I was very upset with scientists when you wouldn't allow Pluto to be called a planet anymore. But sometimes the truth hurts. It's part of growing up. Thank you for helping me see that. That wasn't a question, but it sounds familiar. Wait a minute, you're Truman, the guy who sends me a long email every day at 3.37. I got one yesterday that must have been 500 lines long. Sounds like you didn't get the whole thing. I'll be sending. I'm going to be a scientist. I would like to go to the moon. And I'd like to see you go, too. I'm a fan of space exploration. You can start the seminar now. Thank you. There are 100,000 times more stars in the universe than words ever uttered by every human who has ever lived. All week, we'll have activities where you'll observe the world and ask questions about it just like scientists. Actually, being curious is what most kids are like. And a few dogs, too. Curious is good, right? It's not like furious. No, curious means excited to learn new things. If you're curious about something, you want to know more about it. Pick a buddy and observe the night sky together. You'll share your observations here tomorrow. In case I find one, is climbing aboard a UFO unwise without a parent or guardian? Technically, if you can climb aboard it, it's no longer a UFO. UFO stands for Unidentified Flying Object. If you've identified it as a spaceship, it's no longer unidentified. Oh, he's good. If you must board a UFO, first, get your parents' permission. But then, most importantly, bring back evidence. When those aliens are busy doing something else, just pick up an alien coffee mug as evidence, and then bring it back. Evidence, okay. Helen! Hey, Helen! Wanna work on that with me, star partner? Uh, oh, Alice needs me more. Alice, be my star buddy? Oh, yeah, sure! 
You don't want to team up with TD? No, he'll look for UFOs and do goofy TD stuff. Whoever's with him won't get anything out of this seminar. Star partners? Uh, I'm with her! And me, him! Us! Buddies! Is there anything more amazing than this vast universe? Let's discover that together, partner. I take this very seriously. Promise you'll work hard. So hard we're gonna discover stuff nobody's ever heard of. You guys see anything good? Yeah. Did you know the moon moves across the sky? Yes. It not only rises and sets like the sun, which is due to the Earth's rotation, but the moon also moves against the background stars because it orbits the Earth. I always thought it just hung there. We spotted the constellation Orion, the hunter. I'm charting it. Ever wonder how the stars knew how to line up and form pictures? No, I don't find stars interesting. Not even the dog star? Dog star? There's a dog star? It's only the brightest star in the night sky. <gasps> Hear that? Brightest star. Dog! <laughs> it's the eye of the Canis Major constellation. Canis Major means great dog in Latin. <laughs> great dog! How right is that? Remind me to lick the next astrophysicist I see. And done. Here, TD, take this home to look at so you know what we saw. Sure, thanks. So TD isn't causing problems? No, I think he's going to learn a lot. Wow! There are lots of stars Truman didn't even use. We observed the moonrise last night, and when we woke up this morning, it was setting. It doesn't just hang there. What? That was for the dog star. We're next. I charted the constellation that we observed. See if you can guess which one. Show them, TD. You want to check it first? <gasps> Why? I added more stars and connected them to see what picture they made. My observation? You can't connect just any stars and get pictures. Looks like you observed the Scribbly constellation. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting experiment, guys. Interesting experiment, guys. He said he thinks I had some part in that mess. I thought adding more stars would make a better picture. I wanted to surprise you. Mission accomplished. Ever seen a telescope before, Martha? I've heard the word, but I don't know what a telescope does. A telescope is a tool that helps us see things very far away. It makes them look bigger and closer. Up close, the moon looks delicious. I'd like a taste. Oh, don't worry. I wouldn't eat the whole thing. Or would I? Truman, is that dot Mars? Yes, you can get a better view through my telescope. The best views of Mars came from the Mars rovers, robots that drove around on the planet and sent back pictures. Ooh, where do we get one of those? You can't buy a Mars rover, TD. Maybe I could make one. I took photos of the moon through my telescope and printed them out. Hold it, Truman. We're getting a transmission from the planet Mars. What are you doing now? Rolling, Professor. Pictures are coming in from our TD Truman Martian rover. There's the surface of Mars now. Rocky. Ooh! Ah! Hmm, this action isn't bad. Is that a garden hose? The exact makeup of the Martian surface will require further research, Truman. <laughs> So will that thing. <laughs> Yay, Skits! <laughs> All you did was strap a camera to a lawnmower. Truman? Do you know why Truman ran out? You embarrassed him in front of his hero. He's taking these activities seriously. But you make it look like he doesn't. I can see that. And I'm a dog. I take it seriously. I couldn't really get a Mars rover, so I did my best. What else can I do? You could prove to him how serious you can be. Oh, I can do that. Truman, I didn't mean to embarrass you in front of that important astrophysics guy. I'm sorry. Apology accepted. Now, I'm busy. What are we doing? The goal of this activity is to identify possible pieces of outer space here on Earth. Identify? If you identify something, you figure out what it is. Ugh. Or you could identify someone by saying who it is. 
I would identify you as the guy who just threw away what looked like a piece of a meteor, which I handed to him to examine. Oops. So we're looking to identify something that's made of the same stuff that's out there? Exactly. This will be our last presentation for Dr. Tyson, so I want it to be just right. Okay, I'll bring a piece of the universe to the seminar. I am not looking forward to this. By knowing how to identify the North Star, sailors were able to find their way hundreds of years before GPS and computers. Knowing about the night sky can keep you from getting lost. Thank you, Ronald and Carolina. Truman and TD, we're all looking forward to your final presentation. You said you'd bring a piece of the universe. I did. Go ahead and start. I forged for samples of... How can I trust you? You're standing here with nothing. If you brought something for our final presentation, where is it? It's you. Me? Me too. All of us. The molecules and the atoms that form the molecules that make up everything in the universe are like the atoms that make up the human body. Ugh. He's right. He's right? <gasps> we are in the universe, and the universe is in us. You gotta love that. Oh. I have to say I didn't make that up. I used the library and read a bunch of things and stuff. He just read it. He didn't discover it. That's not being a scientist. Scientists don't just discover. We read and do research and then build on that research to go even further. By doing research and passing along his findings to us, T.D. acted like a scientist. Everything he's done shows that he thinks like a scientist. <laughs> He did it to me again. Neil deGrasse Tyson, my hero, thinks I'm just the goofy kid who was T.D.'s partner. Truman? This dog... Martha! Martha just spoke to me, which was a surprise. She said you were unhappy, which was also a surprise. I didn't want to look bad in front of you. Look bad? Nobody wanted T.D. for a partner. You were the only one who saw that he has the makings of a real scientist. Huh? but he spends all his time making stuff up. Einstein, a smart guy himself, once said, imagination is more important than knowledge. So to discover stuff takes imagination, too. Absolutely. You and TD make a great team. That's kind of frightening. Why don't you both investigate the science of how a dog can talk? Oh, it's all in the alphabet soup. That's it? I'll tell you more if you tell me more about the dog star. You've got a deal. And now that we're in the far reaches of our solar system, we will give a presentation about the planet Saturn. Hold it! What does that mean? Saturn? It's the name of the planet there, the one with the rings. No. What does presentation mean? A presentation is when someone makes a speech or a report to a group of people. So if we float here and we tell them all about Saturn, we're giving a presentation about Saturn? A presentation with great visual aids, like the actual planet Saturn. I'd say we went a long way to make this a good presentation. Yes, 743 million miles from Earth. I'm curious about one thing. When the presentation is over, how do we get home? Um, our next presentation? How to get home from Saturn. Help! Hey, guys! TD, what happened? It looks like you got blasted by a sonic boom. Sorry, I can't hear. I just got blasted by a sonic boom. I'm building the first model airplane to break the sound barrier. It's my summer activity. Oh, that sounds fun. No, it's an activity. An activity is something you spend time doing, like a project. I know what an activity is, TD. No, I don't want any toast, but thanks. Hey, Truman. <sighs> What's the matter? Camp Winnetka's closing. It's in today's paper. Oh, but I thought you were going to visit your grandparents this summer instead of going to camp. I am, but it's not me I'm worried about. It's Milo. He was supposed to go this year. He'll be devastated when he hears the news. I guess he'll have to come up with another activity for the summer. You don't understand. I've never seen Milo this excited about anything. He's been packing for camp since Christmas. All right, a duffel bag. Milo, don't you want to open up your other presents? Of course, just as soon as I'm done packing for camp. It seems like all he does is talk about Camp Winnetka. I'm going to Camp Winnetka! See what I mean? 
Oh, wouldn't the camp have called Milo's dad by now to tell him that they're closing? How could they do that if they're already closed? Huh, good point. A coffee pot? Why do you want a coffee pot? He was doing another experiment, right? Yep. Well, Truman, I guess you'll just have to break the news to Milo. I can't crush another one of his dreams. Last week, Milo found out the ice cream parlor stopped serving peanut butter swirl, his favorite flavor. One more piece of bad news could shock Milo's system and destroy his ability to experience joy forever. Life, dull, running through mud, nothingness, dirt, laugh, no, no more joy. Which is why Milo can never know how much fun he's missing out on. This is all my fault. I was the one who told him how much fun it was going to be. That's it! I'll do a mini camp for him. Only I'll make it so miserable and grueling that he won't want to go to real camp. Thanks for agreeing to help, by the way. But we... Wait! What did he say? All I heard was something about tacos. We'll fill you in later. Okay, okay. But you don't have to yell. All right, campers. Camp Truman is now in session. Milo, I'm sure you're curious about camp. Well, Camp Truman will give you a feel for what camp is really like. That way you'll be prepared for... Camp Winnetka! Thanks for doing this, guys. It's no problem. Fun. This is going to be so much fun. Don't get too excited. You see, camp is not all fun and games. Really? The brochure says Camp Winnetka is all fun and games. From sunup to sun... Well, that's wrong. I've been there, and I can tell you camp is grueling, exhausting hard work. Wait, grueling? Is that anything like drooling? Because that's easy. No, Martha. Grueling means something that's really tiring and really hard to do. So what's our first activity? The most important part of camp is making sure that you have a clean and tidy campsite. Sorry, Martha. I guess you can't help with the cleaning. What are you talking about? I'm a great cleaner. <laughs> Ooh, there's a muffin crumb. <laughs> ah, somebody spilled the soda. <laughs> Truman, don't you think this is clean enough? Nope. The campground must be impeccable. Come on, Truman. You could eat off this driveway. I have eaten off this driveway. Well, there's still dirt on the ground. That's because it's the ground. Can't we do something else? Don't worry. Milo will get tired and quit soon. Yeah! Score! Hey, cleaning up like this is fun. TD, you have to stop making things fun. Milo's supposed to be having a bad time. Remember? Oh, sorry. Whoa! Well, the campground is clean enough. Our next activity is KP, Kitchen Patrol. Oh, I know all about that. I'm always patrolling the kitchen for scraps. Kitchen Patrol is an essential part of camp life. At real camp, you spend a lot of time doing tasks like washing dishes. Sorry you can't help out, Martha. That's okay. I'll just patrol the kitchen for crumbs. Truman, we're almost done with the dirty dishes, and Milo doesn't seem to be having a terrible time. Are you kidding me? He's miserable. Look at him. Hey, TD. Awesome. Watch this. <laughs> this is fun. Bubble fight. <laughs> All right, kitchen patrol is over. Aw, but my fingers were just starting to get wrinkly. TD, you have to stop making things fun. Milo's supposed to be having a bad time, remember? I can't help it. Fun just follows me wherever I go. <laughs> See what I mean? All right, another very important part of camp is snack time. How are you going to make snack time grueling? Trust me. Camp is about learning survival skills. So instead of me giving you a snack, you'll have to forage for it yourself. Oh, that's easy. I forage all the time. In fact... <laughs> when you forage for something, you look or search for it. All of our food comes from nature. But finding it is a hard, grueling job. There are no grocery stores in the wilderness, so your task is to forage for your snack. Can you believe somebody threw out this perfectly good garbage? <laughs> well, what are y'all waiting for? Dig in! Uh, no thanks. Oh, well, suit yourselves. Just means more snack for me. <laughs> also, before you can eat what you foraged, I have to check it out in this. The Complete Wilderness Guide to Edible Plants. Mother Nature can be a harsh mistress. Many colorful plants are deadly poison, so I will have to confirm that each and every item you forage is safe to eat. Okay, campers, let's get foraging. Hmm. Ew! Watch. 
Miles gonna get so frustrated and hungry, there's no way he'll want to go to camp. Hey, guys, look what I was able to forage. What is it? It's a wild blueberry medley on a bed of dandelion greens with a few nasturtium petals for color. I want a taste. Wait! I need to identify these plants to make sure there's nothing poisonous. Well, are they dangerous? <sighs> no, it's all stuff you can eat. Mm. Wow, delicious! All right, snack time is over. Truman, I don't think your plan is working very well. Just a little longer. If the tasks aren't wearing him down, I'll just have to show him how tiring camp is. <laughs> the next activity at Camp Truman is hiking. I'm curious, is that something a dog can do? Sure. Hiking just means you're going on a really long walk. Really? Oh, I think I'm gonna like hiking. At camp, you may have to hike through the wilderness for long distances with heavy packs on your backs. That's why I filled your backpacks with rocks. A grueling hike is the perfect way to send Milo over the edge. <sighs> I think it's working. We're wearing Milo out. So, are you tired yet? Oh, this is nothing. I used to walk home from school with my backpack filled with heavy books. In fact, I'm really enjoying this because it reminds me of walking through my old neighborhood. Hike is over! Time for swimming! Swimming? Come on, Truman. Swimming is always fun. Not at Camp Truman. Hey, no roughhousing! But I was just scratching my nose. Splashing. You're gonna have to get used to pool rules. At Camp Winnetka, the pool has all sorts of rules. Really? Like what? All sorts of stuff. Like no swimming backwards, no wearing yellow, no dogs allowed. Sorry, Martha. Meh, story of my life. I got this great new comic book. No talking about comic books! This is <sighs> really nice. Just hanging out and relaxing. All right, Truman, this has gone far enough. No standing up and saying this has gone far enough. Ah. Truman, your plan isn't working. Then it's getting late, and I want to go do actual fun stuff. Sorry, Truman, we're going home. Wait, if making camp grueling and boring didn't work, making camp too scary for Milo will. A flashlight? Well, I'm not allowed to play with matches, so instead of roasting marshmallows, we'll just have to air them out. Mmm, they do taste better aired out. And now it's time for scary stories, which are a big part of camp. Just watch. Milo won't even want to hear the word camp once I'm done with this story. Once upon a time. And the footsteps got closer and closer and... Ah! I'm starting to get really scared. Me too. I'm starting to scare myself. I can't finish the story. Camp is over. Milo, I hope you realize that camp is grueling, tiring, and really scary. So everyone will understand if you don't want to go to Camp Winnetka anymore. Are you kidding? Today was so much fun. If Camp Winnetka is even half as good as Camp Truman, I'll have a blast. Truman, you have to tell him. Tell me what? I hate to break it to you, Milo, but Camp Winnetka is closed. No, it's not. It's in the newspaper. Camp Winnetka closes its doors. But that's only half the paper. Where's the rest of it? Hmm. Ahoy, matey! Oh, yeah. Camp Winnetka closes its doors and reopens at a brand new facility. Oh, how about that? Anyway, it's been fun, but I have to go home and finish packing. Well, I think we've all learned something today. <sighs> hey, Milo, how was camp? It was pretty fun, I guess. You guess? Well, the whole time I was there, I kept thinking about how much more fun it would be if you guys were there. I really like you guys. We think you're great. You're the best, I like Milo. you too. Which is why we should have Camp Truman every day for the rest of the summer. What do you say? Uh, I'm, I'm sure they love their place. Huh? Was it something I said? Who knows? Hey, do you want to go foraging for snacks and hiking around the neighborhood? What are we waiting for? One of the most fun activities at camp is a sing-along. Here's a song about how much I love nature. From the mountains to the valley, from sea to shining sea, there's nature all around us, so many things to see. The 
Please keep the bugs and the bats and the snakes and the fleas away from me. But Truman, bugs and bats and even fleas are part of nature. <laughs> Tell me about it. Yeah, nature is pretty much all plants and animals. Anything you find outside that wasn't made by people. I know, but I just don't like the part of nature that can bite you. Just keep the bugs and the bats and the snakes and the fleas and the birds and the moss. What do you have against birds and moss? Birds can be really noisy, and moss just gives me the creeps. Everybody! Just keep the bugs and the bats and the snakes and the fleas away from me. Did you catch all the words about nature and the stars? Here are a few again. An astrophysicist is a scientist who studies stars, space, and everything in the whole universe. Ruling means something that's really tiring and really hard to do. An activity is something you spend time doing, like a project. That's our show. Come on, Martha, come play. Mr. Director, could we have some sticks? Thanks! Thanks, oh, Martha. You got it. To dig up some more fun words and games, visit pbskids.org or check out your local library for the Martha Speaks books.